Today we attempt to make the best cookie in the world. probably won't get it, but oh well, let's try. So if you guys haven't been to Lander's yet, I highly recommend that you do. They have absolutely everything. And after the feedback that we got for the rainbow trendiest cake in the world, uh, when the Lander's team and I kind of sat down and talked about what else we should bake, we thought, why not try to make the perfect cookie? Everyone has their own preference when it comes to cookie. I once tried this cookie. It's a Levin bakery cookie. Uh, Levin, I don't know if it said Levin or Levain, uh, but it's based in New York and their cookies are so delicious. This is not the exact one that I really liked. I like their actual regular chocolate chip cookie, but this is like a dark cookie with white chocolate chips inside. But what I wanna try to attempt to make is get that same texture because these cookies are massive. They're the size of my palm. And when I cut into it, it's almost cakey. Like it's super moist, super dense, and it's basically a meal. And I remember when I first tried this, when my wife ran her marathon, I was like, okay, this is insane. This cookie's so good. And luckily enough, one of my friends was coming from New York and they randomly bought me Levine Bakery cookies. And I was like, you know what? This is the perfect opportunity to try to recreate it. First thing I wanna do is make sure I got my oven at around 210 degrees Celsius, which is about four, some, 410 Fahrenheit, I think. Once that is set, well, we basically get going. So we're gonna start by cubing up some really cold butter. So you cut it in little pieces so that you can actually cream with the sugar that you're gonna add over here. All that goes into our bowl here. So I need about 20 grams more in there. To that, we're gonna add our sugars. So I've got half a cup of white sugar here, and I have one cup, I believe, of brown sugar. So I'm gonna start by creaming that off together. Once you have a nice creamy texture like this, basically just butter and sugar, what we're gonna do is add in our eggs. So I'm gonna crack two eggs, and then I'm gonna cream that at a very low, what do you call this? Speed, low speed. This is all creamed and good to go. Now we're slowly gonna add the other ingredients, so I'm gonna change it to a dough hook, because this is about to get really thick. So we're gonna go ahead and switch this on, and then we'll start slowly adding our dry mixtures. So I've got a uh, one half cup of all-purpose flour mixed in with one half cup of cake flour in here. So we're just gonna slowly add everything until it just combines nicely. Okay, in goes about one half teaspoon of salt. Then we're adding three fourth teaspoons of baking soda. And then finally, one teaspoon of cornstarch. So let's check on that first. This is my kryptonite, like perfectly made cookie dough. So tasty already. So that's good to go. We're gonna add in our chocolate chips. So I got about two cups of chocolate chips here. I got a mix of both milk and dark chocolate. I think that's important. Um, and I'm just gonna cut them up nicely and coarsely, more importantly. And then finally to that, we're adding about two cups of walnuts. We are all good. Dough is done. So I love baking on silicone mats because they're absolutely perfect. I got these from Massflex and they are just so great so nothing really sticks to them. My only issue is, I always forget something. I forgot to buy actual baking trays, so I'm just gonna improvise and use these tops as that it works as well. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just lightly butter this silicone surface. So what's really important about these cookies, most regular cookies, you kind of have like this kind of ball and you put it and then it folds out and it gets really thin and crispy. You want these to be thick and chunky. Look at the size of this. This already comes from a ball that's much bigger because it'll flatten out as it cooks and as the butter melts. So I'm thinking you need space for these cookies to flatten out. I'm happy with that. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and place this in the oven for about nine to 12 minutes until they look like they're almost done. And then I'm gonna go ahead and take them out and then we need to rest them for about 15 minutes. And then we can tell whether or not they're ready. Obviously as they come out, you're gonna be like, oh, I can eat this right away. But you can't, you really need that cookie to set up first. So it's really important to keep it out for 15 minutes and then you can eat it. Okay, it's been 12 minutes. Definitely not the right shape. <laughs> Why does this always happen? Okay, much flatter than what we expected it to be. Look at this. There's a very big difference between these two. Uh, okay, what we're gonna try is I'm gonna make a smaller ball. I still have enough dough here to make one small ball, put it back in, see how that works. Maybe it works or not. I'm pretty sure they taste delicious because the dough is really good. Um, but let's, before calling it a fail, let's figure it out first. This is shape number two. So this is a pizza cookie. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna transfer these and then we're gonna start again. Okay, so what I can see from this mistake is I think they were a bit too big. So now I'm gonna try to make them a bit smaller and a bit more vertical. So if I start like that, I should be okay. If not, I just made really great cookie dough. Second one looks much better, so I think it really was a problem with size. That's not what she said. Oh, you like that, don't you? <laughs> so the cookie propped up much better. You can actually see the sizing is fairly close. This one's still slightly higher, so maybe it is has to go a bit more vertical, or maybe the issue is uh, the batter probably has to be slightly thicker. I'm not sure. Could probably add a bit more cornstarch in there to figure that out, or maybe not cornstarch, but maybe add a bit more flour. Uh, whatever the reason is, I think that is a pretty successful cookie in terms of size. The height is not all, it's not like completely there, but it's pretty close, guys. Come on, give me a break. Um, so what we're gonna do is just kind of let that go for about 15, 10 minutes to cool down. Um, like I said a while ago, it's really important that the chocolate kind of solidifies and gets not gooey, uh, which is really important. And we'll check back in about 10 minutes. But this one looks like it's a success. So after about 15 minutes, I can actually hold it. Density wise, it's more or less the same. The Louvain Bakery one is slightly heavier. I think maybe they have more nuts or more chocolate in there or something. But size wise, I'm pretty happy with it. It's not as propped up, so they're definitely doing something much better than I am, and that's why they own a bakery, and I don't. But it looks like a decent cookie, and it tasted absolutely great. The other ones, and over there, you can now hold it, but because they were so big, they're slightly undercooked when you open them, so I'm just gonna bake these a little bit more just to get them harder. The shape's not there, but again, the flavor's there. So that's the most important part. So these are too big. I was, you know, I have problems with size sometimes, so I wanted to make them bigger than I thought they should be. You know, sometimes guys are just like that. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and split this open and see what it looks like inside. Okay, moment of truth. Let's cut into it. Dum, dum, dum. So you got a nice, moist cookie. Let's try it out. delicious. I'm pretty sure Levin's better, but it's delicious, and that's all that matters. 